Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. Okay, so as usual, I'll show you where we are. Not as far as we were from last uh, session, working on the uh, bottom of the hedge and some of the flowers here to the uh, right of the fountain. We got the beginnings of the light colored flowers and then some more orange ones along the edge of this diagonal. So, yeah, but it's coming along nicely. Goodness, my, sorry, my table that I've got my tablet resting on is being squeaky today for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. So, shifted it around and hopefully that'll stop it from squeaking. That might be rather annoying, I think. <laughs> so here I've been kind of working across uh, several diagonals sort of at once because um, this bottom of the hedge part is almost all one color. So, and then there's more confetti here where the flowers are, so I'm kind of uh, trying to break it up <laughs> so I don't feel uh, bogged down with confetti and I don't get bored in the uh, areas with lots of color, so or big blocks of color, I should say. So, uh, yeah. Like I said, I, I'm not strict about where I stitch next. I can just kind of go where the colors take me. I guess it's my ADHD way of stitching. <laughs> hmm. Well, sorry about that. I don't know why that table's being so squeaky. Oh. Usually isn't that bad. So yeah, cooling down here again. We had our first frost this morning. Not much, but yeah. Enough they gave us a warning the night before in case people still had some uh, summer garden plants that would get killed off by the frost. Yeah, we do not have a very long growing season, especially if you're not growing in a um, greenhouse. So, yeah, it's always a bit of a juggling act because if you wait too long to put in your, your summer garden, then you don't have enough time for it to uh, give you a decent yield. But if you put it in too early, the frost will kill it off and same with waiting too late to harvest. So yeah, it's, it's pretty touchy. I guess that's why, um, Food here is more expensive than my American friends. I'll see them post, you know, oh, I got this whole uh, cart of food here for, you know, 200 bucks. And I'm like, yeah, that'd be like six or seven hundred bucks up here. <laughs> oh, dear. Plus, if you're like where I live, which is more prairie desert area, there's not a lot of big variety of stuff that grows here in these conditions so everything has to be imported in so of course that makes it cost a lot more like when I grew up in BC you know there's a lot of fresh fruit and vegetable that's a lot cheaper there like I remember um we lived in the Fraser Valley area for a while and um the big one of the big crops in Chilliwack is corn and uh, by the end of the summer, you'd have roadside side stands that were selling them like 10 for a buck and stuff. So, because they were just trying to get rid of it. And oh, they were so good. So sweet and and juicy. And yeah, can't get corn that good here, I find. By the time they ship it here, it's just not quite as, quite as good as, yeah, when you get it from the roadside stand there, it had, you know, just been picked couple hours before or something so yeah it was so good yeah 
yeah, I remember because uh, you have to do your, most people are doing their canning end of August, which I did this year too. But um, first year we moved into this house, um, it was in September and our apple tree can go a bit later to be harvested. You know, it, it can be harvested sort of mid, late August, but uh, you could take as long as like mid-September even. They'll hang on for that long. So uh, yeah, I had to go to the store and I was trying to find some jars and stuff. And lady was looking at me weird like, you know, well, everyone's done their stuff by now. It's like, hey, I just moved. Get off my back. <laughs> but they did still have some jars and pectin and things. So yeah, I didn't... um process the whole crop before. I didn't start doing that till we've been here a few years. And then I got sick of the fact that I, I couldn't give the, the apples away and couldn't take them to donate anywhere because they're perishable. And yeah, my husband was having to compost them all. And it just felt like such a waste, you know? I don't like wasting food. So yeah, that's when we started figuring out how to juice and preserve it, so. Oops. Yeah, we did a little bit of canning in home ec, but not very much. We did jars of pears. Yeah. And I remember I blew it because um, it was like two to one for water plus sugar, and I, I made the wrong one, the more concentrated, so I put too much sugar versus water and then it's like well what are you gonna do we have to dump it out and start again because yeah you can't take the sugar out once you put it in you're kind of committed then <laughs> oh dear yeah i did pretty well in that cooking class except for the follows directions because uh i would occasionally i mean i'd read them but i'd still like wouldn't register in my brain like i said adhd <laughs> Well, it's like I said, sometimes I have to shoulder check twice when I'm driving because I will look and properly, you know, look to see if there's a car there. And then I turn back to face forward and I'm like, wait a minute, was there a car actually there? And I mean, I looked in that direction. My eyes were open, but it's like it doesn't register in my brain. Did I see a car there or not? So I have to look again. It's like, oh, Pete's sake. And for the record, there's never been a car there. The second time I look, I think if there actually was, I would notice it. But yeah, it's one of those, I looked, but I didn't register. And so I have to double check before I move because obviously I don't want to be missing a car in my blind spot. That would be my fault. Oh my. Yeah, and I don't have that bird's eye view thing on my car. It's too old. Oh, oh, me. Huh. Woken up super early this morning because uh, my husband was snoring. Oh, he doesn't very often, but sometimes he does. And I poked him a couple times, but he's still snoring even on his side. So I ended up getting up, <laughs> going to lie down on the couch, get another hour of sleep that way. Ugh. So I had to bundle up for my walk because it was still a little, a little frosty this morning when I went out. But yeah, I tried to take my walks outside for as late in the year as I possibly can until I can't anymore. Yeah, it's funny because winter's coming and that tan I got from that sunburn is still there. I got one of those, um, it was called a tan be gone, kind of loofah mitt to exfoliate the skin. And it seems to be fading really slowly, but yeah, it's definitely not, it's not fading as quickly as I'd like it to. It's pretty frustrating. Okay, so. 
yeah, I was doing all this other stuff above because it was pretty boring and I figured you guys won't want to watch me stitch huge blocks of color on camera. That's not very interesting, right? Hmm. already highlighted. I got lots of threads of this color around here I can see. They came from different directions and they're all sort of converging but they're all pretty short so yeah. Okay and that one I just parked how long is it? Okay that's a bit longer so I should have enough to do everything in this diagonal with the threads that I have. Some people might prefer to sort of jump around more and use just one thread. And that's totally fine. You do what works for you. Ooh. Oh. oh my gosh. Mm. Yeah, I need a good long weekend to catch up. Although I guess it'll be uh, Canadian Thanksgiving pretty soon. It's funny, I it almost always seems to take me off guard. I just, you know, it's the same time every year, you know, like the second Monday of the month or whatever. And yet it's, it always seems to, I forget that I have to do some uh, special grocery shopping. <laughs> yeah, I don't cook a turkey because... Uh, we're just not huge turkey fans in my my house, and there's only three of us, so, you know, we don't want to be eating it forever. So, um, yeah, I make stuffed chicken breast instead. And usually I make a huge batch of the uh, roasted garlic potatoes, and it's good for, you know, two... We get two or three meals out of it, and I just make different stuff to go with it rather than us having to eat turkey and then having to have turkey sandwiches and turkey soup and all the rest for months after, or weeks after, I should say, yeah. So. Yeah, also means I don't have to spend as much time in the kitchen, you know. Stuffed turkey or chicken breast only takes like an hour, so... I actually made a big stuffed turkey breast one year so that we'd have turkey, but yeah, it's drier even with brining it. So yeah, I just said forget it. <laughs> and I actually tried making one of those butterball the boneless turkey roasts one year. It wasn't bad, but it wa wasn't as good as my stuffed chicken breast. So yeah, that was when um, my sister-in-law lived in town. So it was a bit of a bigger meal, but there were more of us. So, yeah. Yeah, I saw some, they had on uh, America's Funny, some videos, some fails where people didn't know how they were cooking the turkey. And they thought that the bag inside the turkey was stuffing that came with it. They didn't know it was the organ bag. So, <laughs> whoops. Yeah. So I'm kind of borderline here with this stitch on the edge. I think I'm going to leave that one because there's only enough here to sort of do the stitch that's parked and then another one down to the to the right. And then I'm going to attach a new thread for the other ones. So yeah, that's what looks like it will make the most sense to me. Oops. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Keep switching colors when I don't intend to. Okay. Ooh. Oh, yeah. So, my pardon if I yawn a lot. <laughs> Hope 
Hopefully it won't make you feel tired. <laughs> Ooh. See how long, how much there is. Okay, so let's see what length of piece I want to use for this thread here. I've been doing this a while, so I get pretty good at uh, guesstimating how how far a thread will last. Lots of colors in this area. So, should keep things interesting for you all. pretty tired today so I might get a bunch done on Firefly background this, yeah I don't know how long my mental brain power is gonna take to uh, to do in this complicated stuff Looks like the sun's coming out again today. Yeah, we may have had frost in the morning, but it's still been nice and unseasonably warm during the days. It's been perfect, actually. Wish this weather could be like this year round. Just basically, we can, um, it's cool enough I can still use my oven and not make the house com uncomfortably hot, but, uh, yeah, warm enough that we're not, oops, my gosh, I tell ya. Yeah, warm enough that we're not freaking freezing cold. Although I did have to dig my mittens out. Oh, and I couldn't find them. I, um, I washed them and put them away. And, uh, you know, when we reached spring and uh, I cannot find them anywhere. And I'm going, what the heck, I always put those in the coat closet, you know, with the scarves and warm winter coats and everything, and I can't find them anywhere. It drove me nuts. And then, um, no place was selling those little, um, pop top mittens. I like the ones that are like fingerless gloves inside, and then they have a top that goes over to cover your fingers so that you can, you know, open them up, do stuff with your fingers, and then put the top back on to keep your hand warm when you don't need that dexterity. And I couldn't find them anywhere. So I ended up having to sort of makeshift myself my own set. So I had some gloves. They're texting gloves, so they don't have to be fingerless. They can cover you, but you can still do basic uh, on your touch screen. And um, so I got those. And then I got a set of big mittens. And then I actually just uh, cut a slash across them here and uh, hemmed it up. And uh, yeah, so I got my own now. Worked out pretty good, actually. And I thought, okay, as soon as I fix, you know, fashion these, I bet I'll find my mittens. But no, they haven't turned up, so I don't know where they are. Luckily, my um, my son's gloves are still... I still found those because he has these really nice uh, sheepskin gloves. So. Yeah, they don't make them small enough for me. But, yeah, for him, they're good. Because, yeah, he was wearing through uh, mittens and gloves really quickly. So these ones are good. They've lasted him for, you know, 
three years or so. So, yeah. Okay. There's no getting around. There's a fair amount of changing threads today. That's all right. Oops. the point where I have to leave the uh, the heat turned up in my car every time I park it so that if it's cold I can preheat the car before I get in and you have to <coughs> pardon me <coughs> when you um around here especially when it gets really cold you need to let the engine run for a few minutes before you drive because it's really really hard on it otherwise so yeah I like to keep the interior heat turned on and I have a remote starter that my my husband put in so Yeah, it's really nice. Although I said, it's funny. I'll be at the doctor's office like blocks away and I can start it up. Oh, I did not want to go in the right spot. Yeah, and it'll start up no problem, but from my back door, I don't know, must be the material it's made out of. It doesn't always work. You have to actually go to the window and look and make sure that it actually started. <laughs> oh, so practically requires a rain dance. Oh. I actually saw they made these um, <coughs> uh, smart ones that um, you could connect to an app on your phone and actually text it to um, start up. And my husband has one that actually um, has like a little uh, picture on it that will get feedback from the car or the truck computer. So it'll actually tell you if it, if it started or not. Instead of mine, you push the button and hope for the best. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Now, I think I'm going to end up doing one out of order here. Yeah, it's just that one there in the next row. That's just the most efficient way, and I don't want to be crossing all over the place, starting new threads for one stitch that's out of order, so... I will do that. <sighs> yeah, I had a friend on, on Facebook who put up a picture showing that there was a store that already had their Christmas stuff out. It's like, my gosh, you guys. We haven't even had Halloween yet. We aren't even close to having Halloween yet. It's still weeks away. My gosh. All right, where was I? Ah, right here. Once again, the grid line helping me find the right spot. Okay, and then I did that one as well. There. So, like I said, we're out of order a bit, but that's okay. Okay, and I think this one will be ended off. Yes, it's very short. So I have, again, some light bits here because of the flowers. So I'm going to be careful not to pin stitch where the lighter colors will be. I don't want it to show through. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, let's clean that one with that one. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, we're having the last few car shows of the uh, the year. It's like the last uh, few weekends has been every weekend. Got to do that before the snow flies since they're outside. So, yeah, my husband's been having to take the company GTO in quite a lot. <clears throat> yeah, we actually went to one where they did a exhaust sound test to see who had the loudest one. <laughs> oh, that was definitely a plug your ears. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely loud. There was one guy who said he actually uh, they had to do it a second time because um, I think he was using a decibel thing on his phone and it went higher than the phone could um, app could could register so they had to get a a better one so yeah yeah we saw one it was like it looked like a minivan it was some import can't remember what it was and um it was lowered so much on the front that i swear the uh the bottom was practically touching the ground i said like you go for any one little bump with that it's gonna scrape you know Oh, you'll have to be careful too about um, parking those ones with the little concrete barrier thing because, um, yeah, there's no clearance. I saw one where somebody's car just about made the clearance and so went right over it. And then when they backed up, it was like scratch, was like, oh, wincing, like, whoops. Yeah, because mine is high enough that it'll, it'll you'll touch the wheels to it and it's got enough clearance that the front bumper won't scratch over it but that poor person did not did not have that much clearance and they didn't realize till it was too late <laughs> okay you know what actually that is well into the next diagonal so I think I'm going to just yeah put all these away sort of some bigger blocks there too, so I'll deal with that later. Okay, 597.
Yeah, so kiddo is settling into the new school year pretty well. Yeah, I'm really happy to see they don't do the amount of homework they did when I was a kid. Ugh. It was like as much load as being like a medical resident or something. It was just, ugh. Like every class would give you an hour of homework. And, you know, when you've got five or six of them, that's, you know, a lot. And, uh, and I thought, oh, yeah. And as also, they were always telling you, you know, don't carry too much weight in your backpack. And I'm like, okay, but... This was, of course, in the days before, you know, Google Classroom and PDFs and stuff for your information. So you would have to carry home four or more textbooks. And each of them weighs, you know, two or three pounds. And it's like, so what am I supposed to do? In fact, a lot of times I ended up having to carry a full backpack and books in my arms, too. Like, geez, no wonder I have neck and back problems. <laughs> Ugh. And it was wild. They're always pushing you, too, to, like, do, you know, extracurricular activities, hold a job, have a social life. And I'm like, okay, but how? You know, I'm in school, you know, seven hours a day, and then you give me, you know, six hours of homework a night, and I got chores, too. And for a while, I was taking piano lessons, and uh, it's like, you know, and I got to sleep sometimes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Plus, yeah, they said they did studies that showed that um, um, homework doesn't really improve learning outcomes. So it's it's actually quite pointless. So, yeah, I'm really glad that um, they generally give the kids sufficient time to do stuff in class. And uh, so my son rarely has homework. And if he does, it's like 15, 20 minutes. You know, nothing like I did where I was up till 2 in the morning trying to finish it and falling asleep on my desk. So, yeah. <clears throat> I'm really glad that they don't, uh, they haven't had that. But that homework uh, mentality has changed. I'm really glad he doesn't have that same. Because, man, I was so burned out by the time I finished high school. Because, I mean, basically, like I said, it was like having a schedule of a medical student like ugh. and especially when you're a teenager you really need your sleep you're growing so much right so <clears throat> And then they had, I had what they call the revenge bedtime procrastination, where it's like you've had no free time all day, so you stay up later than you should because that's the only time you get to yourself. You know, you don't want to go to sleep because that means the next day comes. Uh, it's like, yeah, yeah, I definitely had that. Plus, like I said, I have a, I'm a night owl delayed sleep phase, which is closely connected to having ADHD. So, yeah, it was not good. <laughs> Okay, thirty-seven forty-seven. Finally had to talk with those neighbors whose dog was barking all day because it is getting ridiculous. They've gone on for almost a month, six more or more hours a day. And the problem was that dog would set off other people's dogs. The other people have dogs, but they're pretty good. They don't bark a lot. You know, I recognize dogs are going to bark, but not constantly all day. That's not okay, you know. And uh, the problem is that dog would bark 
And then the other dogs would bark back at it. So it's just all day long, back and forth, back and forth. You know, like I understand, dogs are going to bark sometimes. You know, when the mailman comes, people come to the door, people come home. Every now and then they'll see a squirrel and they'll bark at it. I get it. That's fine. But yeah, when your dog has turned barking into a full-time job, like, come on. I was so on edge all the time. Ugh. And like, even... He was loud enough, even with my TV turned up, I could still hear him, too. So it's just like, ugh. It's kind of frustrating, too. Like, I feel like I shouldn't have had to say anything. You know, like, show some courtesy to the people who live around you. How does that not drive you nuts, even if it is your dog? It would drive me nuts. And, on, you know, nobody else took that on. If you're not going to train your dog, you shouldn't have one. Because, yeah, I've seen people who don't, and it's really sad. Their dog, they had a little dog, so they figured it wasn't a problem. And the uh, poor thing ran into traffic one day, and, yeah, the worst happened. Their poor kids were devastated. Okay, 37.56. Yeah. I had a dog when I was a kid for a while. She was a chocolate lab. She was a sweetie. <laughs> she never barked. She was certainly useless as a guard dog. Everybody was a friend, but yeah. She was a sweetheart. Yeah, they're not great guard dogs, but they're good family pets. Like they said, they're, they don't, they're not nippy. They don't really bite. And, uh, yeah. She didn't run off when you were walking her. Like, I always kept the leash on her because that's the law. But the leash should be like dragging on the ground because, yeah, she just stayed right by you. Yeah, I haven't got one as an adult. I think I'm just too lazy now. <laughs> and that wouldn't be fair to take on a dog if I'm not going to... I'm not going to be consistent about walking it or training it or anything, you know. That's not fair. They deserve someone who's, who's into the dog owner lifestyle, so... That's what I said. Guinea pig is a nice pet. <laughs> don't need to walk her. You could still play with her, but you don't need to walk her. Yeah. She's pretty happy if you just show her some love, pet her head, and you walk by her cage. It has her fresh bed. She is happy. Yeah, we had a hamster too when I was a kid, but they're nocturnal and they're not as interested as pl in playing with you, I find too. Although it is, it is fun to watch them stuff things in their, in their uh, cheeks. They could fit a lot more in there than you think. Okay. And they can squeeze through smaller, uh, Smaller uh, openings than you would think, too. We had an old um, shape sorter toy from when we were, you know, really little. It was, like, shaped like a bear with different, you know, shape slots, and you put the pieces in. So we would put that in and watch the hamster go through it, turning himself into, like, a bow tie shape and a plus sign shape. And <laughs> yeah. It's quite funny. We put a little bit of food in the inside and then yeah, we climb in to get it.
Okay. All right, just looking for more threads I can. Yeah, these are already oh, I've got needles on them, so I will get these out of the diagonal, out of my way. Okay, I'm going to park this down here because there's really only enough left for one stitch. And I'm actually going to tack it down with a single pin stitch before I park it because it's a ways away. That way it won't get pulled loose while I'm stitching around it. Because that has happened before and it's a real pain. So yeah, if I'm carrying it a fair ways. I'll often do that, tack it down, and then I don't have to worry about it getting all loose and sloppy on the back, causing me tangles and all those other not fun things. Goodness, I don't know why that is so squeaky. My apologies. I'll see if I can fix that for the next the next video. Hopefully it's not annoying you as much as it's annoying me. <laughs> there. Kept missing the loop there. It's funny now, I use loop starts in all my other sewing too, not just cross stitch from learning it from that, then I don't have to tie as many knots. Like when I was um, hemming the edges of the, uh, the slit I made in those mittens to make them pop tops, yeah, I used, uh, I used a loop. Yeah, especially when you would have to try to tie more than one knot on top of each other to make it thick enough to not pop through the fabric and yeah it was a pain you'd end up sometimes with two knots with like a millimeter between them oh that would be frustrating as heck yeah when i was a kid i tried to sew more but i never really caught on with that Yeah, I mostly just do very basic alterations like hemming pants and uh, that kind of thing. Or I had some shirts that um, they fit in the shoulders and the hips, but they were too big in the waist, so I just took in the sides a little bit. That's pretty basic. Yeah, they said actually um, a lot of people don't realize that most clothes are intended to be that way. They're kind of made boxy so that you can make alterations because everybody used to have their stuff tailored right back in the day and that's why so that's why you know you'll see something that looks good on the model and then you put it on and it's like oh geez this doesn't look so nice well it's because of the model actually has it the excess fabric pinned so that it actually follows you know the contours properly instead of hanging all all baggy and, and stuff so it's not you it's actually the clothes yeah so I highly recommend people learn to do basic darts and things because they can make a really big difference in how your clothes look without having to pay for for tailoring tailoring prices which is quite a lot 
Yeah, I was really lucky I actually didn't have to do that when I had, um, my prom dress was super long. And, uh, I'm short. So even with huge heels, I had four inch heels, platforms, because, you know, that was a style at the time. My, my Spice Girl shoes. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, yeah, it was still, like, four or five inches too long. It was made for, I guess, so that tall people could get it and then if you're short we can get it uh, shortened so yeah my uh one of my friend's moms did it for me and she did it for free i was so grateful i actually wrote her a thank you note <laughs> which yeah i had some nice cards and things that uh i think uh my grandma or my great aunt sent to me so it was a nice excuse to use these cute little you know little note cards like about that big and uh yeah okay yeah man I still have that dress hanging in my closet I have not tried it on in years I'm betting it won't fit anymore <laughs> yeah because I've grown I wasn't done growing by prom and uh I had a baby since then, you know, things are never quite the same after that. My rib cage got bigger, my hips definitely got bigger, so, yeah. Well, I just haven't had occasion to wear anything that fancy. I wore it to, um, I wore it to my, uh, my brother-in-law's wedding, because that was only, let's see, yeah, a couple years after prom. They married pretty young, just like me and my husband. So, um, yeah, so the dress still fit then, but I'm guessing it won't now because that's like, yeah, 21 years ago. <laughs> so, yeah, I think anything you've got that was form-fitting after 20 years, it's probably not going to fit you anymore. Things change. Yeah, I said I finally did a clean out of my closet. I think when my son was like three or four. So I had, I had clothes still from high school, you know, at that point. Because I had him when I was 25. So, uh, but yeah, so I, um, I went through and it was like, a lot of stuff was just like, I remember bell bottoms had come back in the late 90s. Huge ones. And it's like, well, those aren't the style anymore. And I mean, plus, I feel like I'd look kind of ridiculous, you know woman in her 30s trying to look like she's still in high school <laughs> this style was when she was in high school so yeah there was some of those I got rid of and then a lot of them was also because it was like yeah my waist may be close to the same size but my hips and bum they sure are not <laughs> they will never be that small again so yeah it was time to pass them along for a new owner I actually gave a couple of them to my mom <laughs> Because my mom is, she's tiny. I said, how many people can say that? Hey, these pants are too small for me. I'll give them to my mother. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I took a bunch of stuff to the uh, the thrift store in town. So hopefully they found, they found a good home. Instead of just taking up space in my closet. Yeah, I really don't buy new clothes that much anymore. And the stuff I do is mostly like comfy stuff, you know, sweatshirts, yoga pants. Yeah. I say pain is beauty, but yeah. The older I've gotten, the less I care. <laughs> I just want to be comfortable. Hmm. It's like I've said, the older I've gotten, my, the shorter my hair has gone, too. This cannot be bothered. Yeah, I have a lot of friends who have really nice, brightly colored dyed hair. And uh, I said, I'm not sure I could pull it off, plus... Uh, I'm too lazy. The upkeep, my gosh. I just, yeah. 
I can't be bothered to put that much work in. I said, I'm getting grays and I can't be bothered to dye them. You know, people, oh, you're just embracing the gray. I'm like, no, nah, I just, I don't feel like you know, doing anything with it. <laughs> That's too much work. washing and wear here like at the salon they're like here's how you style it me oh nice it's like yeah i'm, I'm never doing that <laughs> uh, or might try once or twice but then after that yeah i can't be bothered okay i'm actually going to put a magnet right here to just sort of yeah really help tame those threads that are kind of trying to go all over the place. Okay. So I finally finished ER. And then, oh, I said Prima tricked me. They had this, oh, you know, ER special at the end. I thought, oh, okay, I'll watch that. It's not available and uh, not even anything that you can even um, subscribe to, you know, because often they'll have stuff that is available, but you have to pay, like they have the BritBox subscription or the PBS subscription or like, you know, the Horror Channel Shutter or whatever super channel yeah it doesn't it just shows it there but then you can't actually watch it. it's like well why show it to me that's just mean i wanted to watch it because <laughs> yeah it was like they made at the after the series ended where they interviewed a bunch of people who had uh been on the show get their uh get their thoughts about it and uh yeah i kind of like those behind the scenes things like, there's one people keep talking about that was done for Deep Space Nine, which is my but my favorite show ever. And, uh, and then they'll put a link to it, and it's like, oh, no, it's not available in Canada. It's like, oh, darn it. And I can't even, it's not even like I could pay to watch it. It's just, nope, they don't have the distribution or broadcast rights or whatever for Canada, so I'm just out of luck. Like, oh, darn it. I mean, I wonder if there'd be anything that isn't already on the DVD extras because I have the entire show on DVD, but still. Now it's going to annoy me that I'll never know. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, they probably couldn't tell me a lot I don't know anyway because I also have the um, companion book, which was awesome. All sorts of little bits of useless trivia in there. Yeah, they made one for Next Generation, but after reading the Deep Space Nine one, it was quite a disappointment. It was definitely not as detailed. Yeah. Okay. I'm definitely one of those people when I have a special thing I want to find out everything about that special thing <laughs> and then I remember it so yeah I'm the person who's always jumping onto uh, stuff saying hey guess what I bet you didn't know this random random bit of useless trivia yeah but let me try to remember why I went to the store without my list what was on it forget it <laughs> Nothing useful sticks in there, I swear. Oh dear. I had a, once I had to call 
my son was at home and I'd forgotten my shopping list and he couldn't read my writing either. So I was just like, okay, take a picture of it and text it to me. So. Yeah, it's funny because uh, my husband, he can read my writing a bit better, but he still has. So I had um, eggs written on the list and egos, and he thought I had just accidentally written eggs twice. So he didn't tell me about the egos because I called him. And uh, then later I forgot them and he's like, oh, I didn't realize that was a separate thing. So, so actually, honestly, I should always just get him to text it to me if I forget it. Or one time I, I walked out and I felt, you know, I was checking my pockets. Okay, the phone's there, you know, the keys are here. And, well, there's paper in this pocket. That's my list. I get to the store, I pull it out of my pocket. And yeah, that was last week's list. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm so not on the ball. Ugh. And then it's weird because when there's an actual like crisis, I can handle it, but I swear the little everyday things, forget it. I've got a mind like a sieve. <laughs> Yeah, like when I got rear-ended last year. I was just like, okay, I knew, you know, it took one second to sort of, oh, what the, and then, okay, I know what to do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just really, really glad that car was not written off because uh, used vehicle prices have gone, really gone up with the shortage now. As they said, yeah, like, due to the pandemic and stuff, there's a real shortage of computer parts that cars need, and there's not as many being made. And, uh, yeah, my husband got to order a new truck for work, like, last year or something, because the lease was up. It took longer to get than they thought, because, of course, they didn't have everything they needed to manufacture it, so... Yeah, and like I said, he's an engineer, so... Yeah, sometimes getting parts for stuff is quite a quite an ordeal because everything you know supply issues nobody's got it and then sometimes they have the wrong specs online too so he'll order something and then it's not you know it's not going to work for what he needed so. yeah there was one like he actually showed them that it was the wrong measurement and he took a picture with a ruler on it and they kept insisting it was the correct measurement. It's like, no, dude, it's not. It doesn't fit. <laughs> Ugh. And you can see from the picture I took that it, you know, it was off by like an eighth of an inch, which, you know, when you're working with a lot of those things is just, um, that's not something you can fudge, right? <laughs> mm. Or he's had to try to make things work. He had one time he had to work on a security system that was really old. Like 40 or something years and it broke down. And of course there's no way you can get parts for it now. And yeah, he said they were lucky he had a whole bunch of relays and um, on hand. Because yeah, you could order them but they take weeks to get. And fortunately for them he had a whole bunch on hand. Because of course, you know, he's got tons and tons and tons of parts and uh, he was able to use those in program that basically like almost create the kind of circuit board he would have needed I don't know I'm not very techy but yeah he basically had to program them like a little computer to work and uh, yeah I don't think there's many people who could have done that it, it's not something easy but uh, yeah that's how his brain works like I've often said, if he can't fix something, it's probably not fixable. They had one time he did uh, work for a uh, hospital. They had a very old nurse call system. It was probably 50 years old or something. So again, like, you don't have parts. You don't even have schematics you can find anywhere. You know, manuals for that thing. They're long gone. But uh, he was able to use, you know, his uh, 
meters and stuff and, and actually reverse engineer it and then make a circuit board for it to make it work again. And yeah, save them a bunch of money because otherwise they would have had to, there was no fixing it if somebody couldn't do that. It would have been, you have to replace the whole darn thing. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I've often said in, if there's an apocalypse, I am really, really glad he's going to be on my team because uh, he'll be the one who'll be able to make a machine to give us clean water and, you know, heat and stuff. <laughs> oh, can MacGyver just about anything. Okay, so I think I'm going to do another thread there. Yeah. yeah, I decided the other one's going to go over to the right. This one's going to go down to the left. Hmm. Still quite a lot of this color. Yeah, it was funny because like uh, when I needed a new computer and we went to the store to uh, to buy it, and then the guy's like, oh, so will you need any help setting up your laptop? And the other sales guy's like, no, no, trust me, this guy can do it. Because, <laughs> yeah, he'd done work for them before. So they're like, yeah, he can set up a computer. That is not a problem. Trust me. <laughs> he can program a computer. He built his own. So, yeah. Ah, we all have our strengths. He's pretty hopeless at cooking. I can cook, so yeah, I can preserve the food and all that. So I guess we make a good team. He can take care of the, uh, the technical stuff and I can do the basic, you know, sewing and food and those kind of things. So yeah, that's one thing I had about the school. They don't do home ec here anymore. I mean, you can take cooking as an elective, but it's not required, that kind of thing. And yeah. So when I was in high school, that was one thing at least they did well. You know, we knew how to make some basic things, biscuits, and we made pizza, and yeah, learned how to can food, even though I'm sure there's very few people who are going to do it again after high school. Um, we made jam. Yeah. So stir fry, omelets. Yeah, so we did basic, and we did gingerbread at Christmas. So uh, that was fun. But yeah, we just learned sort of basic cooking skills. So yeah, my son is taking um, commercial cooking. So uh, they also get to do some work in the, um, in the cafeteria if they want, and then they get lunch for free, which is really nice. Yeah, they also have to do um, stewardship hours throughout the year um 10 of them per year to um give back to the community so they can do that volunteering for cooking and stuff like that so yeah so he's gotten on that this year because i told him you know don't leave it like you did you know because he had that last year it was sort of we were scrambling in june and uh they um he and his dad ended up volunteering to help for the um, the hazardous waste cleanup that they do once a year. People can put out their paint and and all sorts of stuff to be picked up and that they deal with it. So, uh, yeah, they ended up doing that. Yeah, and he ate like three burgers when they were there. He's not a big burger fan, but he will eat it. And yeah, he was hungry that day. Because yeah, when he worked at the school cafeteria and then they gave him, you know, he could have a burger and instead he had buns and cheese. <laughs> They're like, that's all you want, but yeah. So instead of one real regular burger, he got to get two burger buns with cheese as an equivalent instead. So, <laughs> eh, whatever, made him happy. <laughs> yeah, he had other stuff like vegetables and dip in his, uh, and yogurt and stuff in his lunch. So he had a balanced meal. Yeah, it surprises me the stuff he likes sometimes because um, he likes hummus, which I wouldn't have expected. But yeah, one of the teachers there was having some and he asked if he could try it and they let him try it. And yeah, he liked it. And now he takes a little tub of hummus to uh, the school with him for lunch every day with some, uh, with some pita 
pita pieces so he can have that. Yeah. And it wasn't just a phase either. That's been going on for months, so. Yeah, so it was really nice. They Some of the teachers, they let him try some of the stuff they have. Introduce him to new stuff and... Yeah. Of course, I try to get him to do that, but you know, it's always better when it comes from someone who's not mom, right? <laughs> okay, get myself more comfy here. I think I'll be wrapping this up for the day pretty soon. Take a break and see if I can figure out why this table's squeaking and stop it, because that's annoying me. Okay, I think I'll just work to the end of this row on this diagonal bit here, and then I think we'll call it quits there. Right, 132 or 130 so that's a nice round number which is where I like to stop so as usual um thanks for joining me again today and hope to see you here again another time all right thanks everyone bye